At this time, I call to order the work session of the Maricopa County Community College District Governing Board for September 24th, 2019. Uh, the topic of our work session today is to uh, start discussions about the search process for the next uh, chancellor. And I uh, took the liberty of drafting some suggestions to give us at least a uh, starting point. And uh, uh, the, probably the first thing that we need to talk about is what will be the makeup of the search committee. And Maricopa has an interesting history when it comes to uh, search committees for the chancellor. The most recent one uh, uh, was made up of entirely of representatives of the community with the exception of a representative from the faculty and a representative uh, from the classified staff. Uh, prior to that, when uh, Rufus Glasper was hired, uh, there was uh, no committee. Uh, the board simply uh, conducted an internal search by inviting members of the Chancellor's Executive Council uh, to apply. Only Rufus uh, Glasper applied. Uh, prior to that, after Paul Elsner left the chancellorship, uh, there was uh, a very large committee, even more extensive than the one that I have drafted here. Uh, that uh, search produced, I believe, ultimately two finalists, uh, neither of which uh, were uh, uh, chosen by the board. Uh, the board then decided to do its own search to be its own committee. Uh, so that's the recent history of search committees um, in the, the Maricopa district. So what I have proposed here is, is more traditional um, in higher education. Um, that as the board chair that I would chair the committee, uh, that Mrs. Wynn as the board secretary would be the vice chair, that it would include three faculty members, uh, one of which, at least one, uh, to be a CTE faculty member. And here I said selected by the FEC, but I want to clarify that I mean the large and, and maybe Mr. Shamfell can help me with, with that wording. The large FEC that includes the Academic Senate presidents and their presidents elect and the officers and so on is is referring to that as FEC, correct? Yes. Okay. So I you're looking confused. Not public, but I could address it later if it's all right with you. I just want to make sure I understand that definition. That's yeah, not so, the the F, so, they, so my intent in suggesting this was not simply that the FEC officers make a selection, but that the larger body that constitutes what I understand to be okay. the FEC. Okay, if, if you don't mind me looking at that, yeah. would you a little bit better? Uh, uh, and we'll, uh, uh, two adjunct faculty members, one academic and one CET selected by the academic uh, the adjunct faculty association, and I suppose I should say board. No, I, I am. I think these groups, in my opinion, should pick their own people using whatever process uh, you know they want to use. But uh, but that's the intent there. Um, and I'm I've been reading the updates coming out of the employee group organizing council that they're proposing that uh, employees be called non-exempt and exempt. So I picked up their language here that it would be three non-exempt, otherwise classified employees, and selected by the Employee Group Organizing Council. And that's uh, a default because we do not yet have the uh, new employee groups. But this is a group that has been for all intents and purposes, rep rep representing the classified staff. Uh, 
three administrators to include the provost as a direct report who works at the district office, and two college presidents selected by the president's council, which I believe is chaired by uh, Dr. Taylor. Uh, two students, one academic and one CTE, selected by the Maricopa Student Senate. And then, and I'm definitely open for conversation about this, three community members, one selected by GPEC, one selected by GPL, and one selected by the Maricopa Community Colleges Foundation Board for a total of 18 people. So comments, questions, concerns? Yes, this is my breath. I'm very concerned about having these people hire their boss. I don't like all of these people and the faculty and their employment which on the community. Uh, so I mean this is a very typical hiring committee for a chancellor level position uh, in community colleges. Uh, Personally, I wasn't on the board when the last committee was formed. I know both of you were. Um, I think it was way too thin on the employees because we basically were having people who don't uh, know the day-to-day -day job of a chancellor making a choice uh, for us. So I personally, I also feel that it's really important that constituency groups have a buy-in and will uh, you know, from the get-go, be supportive of the, of the new chancellor, and involvement is the way you get there. Mr. Sarr. Yeah, we haven't had a discussion yet as to what we're looking for in a chancellor. Correct. So, I would say we need to do that before we do this. Um, I don't know how we can do that. So. On the, on the next page, if you want to jump over there, what's again a, a, a way to get us started on the conversation of how we go about collecting input on what we want in the uh, next chancellor. And I mean, we do need a search consultant to do that for us. Uh, but that's different than the committee. Uh, I, I guess I'm not following you. You yeah. just brought the search, uh, the search consultant. Yes. Yeah. We've had that discussion. Yeah. Right. But the search committee is different than the consultant. Oh, of course. So, uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't have the consultant. But the committee, in my mind, needs to be formed based on what ultimately the board is looking for in their leader. So, can you give me an example of what would be different on the committee than well, let's the more say, traditional Well, let's say, I'm making um, suppositions that may not be the case in the end. But uh, if the role of a chancellor in the district of 10 presidents and a provost, uh, my feeling is we don't need a 12th president in the chancellor. We need somebody who is going to skills to be uh, the CEO of a large institution with uh, 11 people who are experts in the fields of our business. So assuming that a majority of us agree with you, um, how would the committee look different? Well, it would, it would be more uh, like the last one. No, I, hmm. I was on the last one, so you know where I'm coming from. Um, I, I just think that it's important certainly to have people who know the business on this community. But our business is supporting uh, the community that we serve. So yeah, if we do our job well, getting to the point of bringing those people in, we define what we're looking for. Um, I think sometimes outside individuals have a more open mind than inside people. Mrs. Wynn. I don't know if we have a limit as to how many people we want on the committee, and I hope that we're more concerned about who's on the committee than numbers. But I do think that we're a little bit light on the community. I think that I don't know how the committee was structured the last time again, but 
um, to only have three members from the community when our community engagement is such an important part of the function of the chancellor. I think that we're swinging way too far okay. uh, in having too much representation from inside the college and not enough from outside. The so what would you suggest? I, I would increase at least to five if not seven. And, and how would they be chosen? Oh. Um, I haven't. I like the structure. Yeah. I like who you selected so far. I, I, would, I would maybe look at uh, possibly someone, um, either the Department of Education or the Governor's Office, some some, some other input that has an uh, intersection with our I, 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 I just think there needs to be more community input into this chancellor's mm -hmm. position. Uh, Mrs. Sullivan? You're sure. Number one, I thank you very much for putting some thought together so we have something to react to as opposed to having to be creative and take the time to do that. Uh, you know, I think it's important having I think it's important to have proportional representation of interested constituencies for the reasons noted by you, but in reflection particularly over my learning over this past few years of the report that read and comments by HCL and others, I think it's important that we do have the representation of some employees and appreciate your breakdown. Uh, if, when it comes to the community members, uh, I would agree with Mrs. Wynn that uh, it would be important to ensure that we are looking at uh, the community in a, in a different way than just uh, what I was noting here. GPL is certainly top echelon leaders, the foundation board I think is critically important, particularly given the presentation we've had recently. When it comes to GPEC then, there, I'm looking at that economic development and workforce development piece, but there are two other, a few other entities involved in that. One would certainly be the Arizona Chamber of Commerce, and I know Mr. Hammer is very interested and concerned over how we're examining the impact of the community college system on workforce and economic development. Another one could be in the Arizona Chamber, could be the Greater Phoenix Chamber, which would then bring into play the more local regional aspects of economic and workforce development. So those that would be another one. So those are there, those are two e distinct e or e but I don't know yes. that you would need both is okay. my comment. Uh, then I was thinking of a philanthropic group, and I thought maybe Steve Stoke, he's of course part people of mine, a foundation person, but Steve Stelmos now with the Arizona Community Foundation certainly has his pulse on the philanthropic community beyond what most people do. And given that their, one of their primary interests over time has been a broad spectrum of interest around education and work, I think that it might be an additional, so I've now up to three, which could expand to five. I, I thought briefly about Helios, but then there's, they're very niche, at which then maybe react, go back to the community foundation where you have a broader scope. So. If I was to expand that to five, I would recommend a rep someone from one of the chambers and then looking to the community foundation. If the one element that I also see could, I don't know if it's missing, but certainly a broader perspective on the whole education movement in the uh, area. And whether that means you identify somebody, again, at the top echelon of uh, the governor's office or subsequent departments, or you look to the ASBA, for example, where they understand the function of the board, uh, they represent, again, a different thinking, that perhaps could be another entity. So I'm more making suggestions. I'm not advocating on any one of those, but that would be a spectrum of community interest that would then 
create a little more balance to your concerns, Mrs. Brown, and uh, just just are in one perspective. Reaction to those suggestions, Dr. Green? Yeah, I, w I was thinking as we're looking at, at as we, we look at the community and we're looking at all the partners. I mean, we're I think um, Sullivan alluded to. We've got the high school, we got education as our other partners, high schools and universities. I mean, we're, we're bringing in students from the high school, and we're pushing a lot of them out to, to the university. And so, if we're talking about community partners, I think we, we can't forget our educational partners. And just one other thing with, with the student, and I don't know if this will be an issue or not. Um, of the two students that are one is academic, one is CT. Have we given any thought to full time and part time? Because the issues of full time and part time can be different. I know a part-time student probably doesn't have time to, you know, something like this. Okay, and reaction both to Tom's suggestion and uh, Marie's suggestion. Mr. Sarn? Uh, I agree with Tom. Last time we had Superintendent Mesa Public Schools and Dr. Pro. So uh, I agree those are two sides of where we fit. So if we were, so I found, personally I found it quite odd that Dr. Crow chaired the committee uh, last the committee, time. The committee it, chose the chair. Because depending on the day, they're a partner or they're a competitor. And I, one doesn't normally have the, your competitor choose your chief executive officer. Uh, but what, what process would you suggest that we use for selecting a superintendent and um, the a university partner? Well, from a superintendent, there is a group of superintendents in the association. Uh, yeah. and, SM, SM, uh, and, and as far as post secondary, uh, you know, uh, where, I can, where are you at? Well, I, and I, I would, I would, if we're looking at post secondary at the university side, focus maybe on those who are dealing with transfers. You know, vice presidents who were with academic affairs or admissions or uh, well, the, the person that took uh, Maria Hessen's position. Oh, Cheryl Hyman. Right. Uh, Maria was the one that really. What's, what's interesting about Cheryl is she was the chancellor of the city colleges of Chicago. Correct. And, a, and an early applicant for uh, our chancellor. The last time, yeah. But um, she's got. It. <laughs> but but I, I and as far as um, the, the other suggestions that we look up, I think you know, eighteen is thirty too many. I think we've got to get people together on a pretty regular basis. Well, if, if we added a higher ed person and a K twelve person and three more community people, would be at twenty two, which is still reasonable. Or <laughs> as long as they don't, each one insists on asking a question during the interview. <laughs> um, so you were suggesting Christine Wilkins. Well, I, I a good choice also. Yeah, I, I mean, I, she's certainly been a leader. She understands thinking of the sun. She has relationships to that whole context of transformation. Um, and she always is willing to serve and is a thoughtful leader in her own right. Yeah, she's a good thought leader. Do a leader. quick bio so they're wrong. Yeah. She's like executive vice president to the yeah. issue. It's, but more than that, it, you know, she's a woman who really worked up the ladder to attain her own education as a key leader in appreciating the role of community colleges in developing individuals to be their, their best educated self. She has her, certainly her fingers still on the pulse of uh, the broader community. She's nonpartisan and, and you know, I mean, she comes with a, a lot of different attributes of that. Yeah, it, it's good, but you might too have more than likely have to have permission to put down control. I, I, I appreciate that. Would, yeah. I guess the other thing could be left. Work, but you know, um, could I ask for clarification? What is her present position? 
it, it, Christine, I, you know, I didn't have to give her the title, but she works in the executive office of Dr. Crow. She, she, she is a vice president. She's a senior or an executive or something for the vice president. She's doing the C-suite. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, is there a preference between the Arizona Chamber and the Greater Phoenix Chamber of Commerce? Which one? Arizona Chamber. You know, um, Do you like the Phoenix? I, the Phoenix, I mean, they're both good, don't get me wrong. Uh, Hammer and then. Uh, the both great. I think because it's Maricopa, and the Greater Phoenix Chamber is really just Maricopa. I would opt for that. I, if we were to go that way, I might throw out Jennifer from the war and what was. Uh, no, if we went to the Greater Phoenix Chamber, only well, because they they the one. no, we're we're not necessarily saying they that who would be taught they would that we would invite okay. them. I say to, and then they would select who they want. Yeah, thank you. The same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're saying the Greater Phoenix Chamber and the Arizona Community Foundation. Yeah. So I was. Okay. Well, uh, but but we're the letter right. section that we invite you or your your at, at, at a certain echelon of the standing. I think you don't want. Well, we rely on his yeah. Yeah. Right. Identify. And uh, we'll look for. Uh, we'll ask the uh, uh, Arizona School Administrators Association to select a superintendent. Superintendent. Hopefully a um, Maricopa. Well, yeah, and 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 either a unified or a high school district. Yeah. Could you put a charter put the charter schools in that category? They, they I can't don't be members. Okay, they, 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 they can be members. I'm not saying a lot of part, but they can be Okay. And then um Yes, Mrs. Uh, but we're expanding it. It still looks like the idea that it's so Maricopa Community College is heavy. I would like to reduce the every place should have a tree here, faculty members, not exist, and the administrators reduce that to two. Is it three for each of those categories? Thoughts about that? I concur. I think it's, it's we're still really heavy on the college became the chancellor, and I think that's um, that could be problematic down the road. Yeah, and really, the education on the board makes the chancellor. Right, but, but I think if it if you brought, I, I agree with this program. I think that they should be reduced. Any that are three. Right. In any case, they're all going to be representing the groups that they are selected from. So it's redundant to have. Well, and I, and I have kind of those. To pick the person that does the best job of representing their group. Any yeah, other question for clarification? Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, so, on three administrators, I would presume the provost would definitely be one, and then you would reduce your college president. Is that what I'm understanding? Correct. Under three faculty members, if you took that down to two, would then we take the adjunct faculty member down to one? No. No, it's just where it's three to two. Yeah, I understand, but I'm just thinking of the proportionality of all this. Do we have more adjunct three to one than we do all time faculty? Yeah. You're doing numbers. They, they each represent. They would represent. So whether it's two of them or one, it's probably better to have one. So the, the faculty become one academic and one CTE. Yes, Mr. Hendricks. I'm just saying you're almost reluctant to say this. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm almost reluctant to say this in a public meeting, but I might agree with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're better than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Let me write I'm this down. That's my comment. I wasn't trying to look at that. I look around the room. There's not many people here. Um, I don't think it's televised. <laughs> I'll deny it if they bring it up. <laughs> 
but I'm just, as we're thinking about the what microphone group we want. Yeah, you get that talking into it. As we're thinking about what group we want, it gets a lot of did you turn it off? It's on the top. Yeah, it's on the one there. I'll just leave it talk about it. Anyway, my, my thought was, is we're trying to think of who we want on the search committee. And I'm just making a comment. I'm not making a suggestion. But, but Mr. Sarr's comment, if we don't know what we're looking for, let's just take two examples. There's probably a lot of other better examples. But let's say we were looking for someone that came from academia and had a strong education background. We may want more educators to search and interview those people because they know what they're looking for. If we wanted someone with a business background that was going to be a manager, as Mr. Sarr referred to, we have 10 presidents now, perhaps we want more what we call community people, business people. Maybe we should have some discussions to what we want these people to look for and then look for people that can find those. Really, if you ask me to go interview people and find somebody who is a strong academic, this can be piled up what you're going to get from me. Um, if you want me to go find a business guy, I can probably find a pretty good CEO. But you probably need people to find what we're after. I'm not sure I know what that is. But so I'll parse it. Dr. Green, first. I think we're, we're I think we're putting the, the card a little bit before the, the horse here. When, instead of looking for the type of person that we're looking for, shouldn't we be setting up the goals and outcomes that we're looking for and finding the best person to reach those instead of saying this is what, you know this is the kind of person we're looking for instead of saying here's what we're looking to accomplish. What, who's the best person to to do that? Mr. Sullivan. I just wanted to ask for clarification. Uh, so in the event, so according to your design, mm -hmm. if I could, if these groupings on the second page would all be asked to get their input, which at some point the board is going to synthesize anyway. So we would have, in order to achieve doing that, prior to putting a committee together, we would have to move on that pretty quickly, which would impact your timeline. Correct. Okay. So, so typically, and, and again, we can do things untypically, but typically you hire a search consultant. The search consultant comes in and conducts a series of forums or town halls. And the and it's often by constituency group, which is what I have suggested here. Uh, and typically, the consultant asks three broad questions: What are the you know the qualifications and characteristics of the person you're looking for in the next chancellor? And then, what are the challenges that? The, the new chancellor will be facing and what are the opportunities that the new chancellor will uh, uh, be facing. The search consultant you know, typically takes all of that information and drafts the position profile. Typically that position profile first would be reviewed by the committee and then it is presented to the full board for uh, further uh, editing and adoption as the profile. Thank you. So my follow-up question to the two gentlemen. I, is, is, I appreciate the comments. You want to know what the search committee looks like, blah, blah, blah. But is there a concern or a fear if we went this route because it seems like last time we, we were atypical. So we want to follow a different defined pathway is your recommendation from what I'm perceiving. So I, I'm trying to understand the bigger picture so from you guys. But excuse me, that was unprofessional from you gentlemen. <laughs> Gentleman one. <laughs> <laughs> 
gentleman too. Well, thing one, thing two. I don't know. However, you want to go. Dr. Rainey's comments are about him. We do have the outcomes that we've had established for for decades that are officially the policy of the board. If you want to expand on that, nationally, presidents, chancellors have been growing in their requirement for raising funds. Right. Um, that is not part of our policy for outcomes. Right. Yeah. But it's a trend that uh, you know, here's Dr. Crow's big role is to raise funds. So we need to have some discussion as to what is important to us in terms of the outcomes that this new individual will uh, possess. So that the discussion paper that I put in front of you does have the consultants doing this with the full board. So it provides a mechanism for us to to have that in. I just want to make sure that the board doesn't override a lot of work that's been done prior to getting to the board. So you're, you're so we could have the the consultant do us first. I, I, I would suggest that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's almost why. Well, kind Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, a, assuming that uh, uh, the consultant may have to travel here, we want to try to yes. you know put things over just a few days. Depends on they are. Maybe we want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that we're a month ahead of time, but uh, during that process, I think it's all the needs to know where the board's coming from so they can kind of let the other groups know kind of where the end result would have to be within that box. Mm -hmm. We're in the boxes now, right? So, uh, with what you're proposing, that if we delay appointing a committee, then the committee will not have a role in the development of the profile. Oh, no. Because if we have to develop the profile first, then appoint the committee. No, I think the profile comes if the search consultant is put in place, meets with us first, right. and, and develops that box that the other individual organizations have to work with them. It doesn't make any sense, right? But if I'm understanding that, that says the board without input is designed right. with the... Right. Well... Uh, I mean, is that what you're saying? I'm just trying no, to get uh, clarification. I, I, I use the box I mean, if, if it has to... The board is going to make the final decision. So... Um, and I would assume that we want to hear what they have to say. So if things do change, but if those individuals uh, from the search consultant learn what the board's thinking is, they're not going to be out outside the box. I, I don't want to take anybody up, but, but isn't that the challenge to innovation and, and entrepreneurial thinking is to get people to help us impact our box? In the end, that would be hopefully true. So I, because I would be very interested in what the community sees as our opportunities and challenges and what our employees see as our opportunities and challenges. Um, but, I mean, we could have the consultant meet with us first, and then we also become the last when, when the person has the profile developed, we become the last group that reacts to it. So we could be front end and back end and back end. But I'm not inclined to tell the search consultant this is a box. Um, yeah. um, so I have similar suggestions on the forums. I don't think it's practical for a search consultant to go out and conduct a forum at all 10 colleges and so on. So I was suggesting the full board 
uh, that the faculty again be the big faculty executive council and the adjunct faculty association executive committee. Uh, again, that we have to use the employee group organizing council uh, as representing the non-exempt of the classified staff. Uh, we, in my opinion, certainly need input from the Chancellor's Executive Council, uh, the Maricopa Student Senate, and then for community, I can broaden that to all of the groups that we've uh, talked about uh, there. Uh, additionally, it's uh, quite common to have an online questionnaire or survey that's sent to all employees uh, so that everyone has an opportunity to provide some input even if they're not part of a, of a group uh, engaging with the search consultant. And that that would be completed prior to the convening of this group so that the search consultant has that input going into the, to the process. Reaction, comments, reactions to that? Uh, in other forums like that, we've uh, televised it. Uh -huh. And people outside the room can put in questions. That's been modus operandi for almost everybody we hired at a number of levels. So those are for, for candidate forums? Yes. Um, here I'm talking about how to develop the profile, how to get input for the profile. Well, we're here to do Who would the well, they'd probably be the same questions that the search consultant would use with the groups. Typically, what qualifications and characteristics are you looking for? What are opportunities and what are uh, challenges? Kind of okay here? So, um, what, are this, up, what are we up to now on number one? For the committee? Yeah. Oh, I well, think we, we took up and then we went down. Yeah, two, yeah, one, two. Kelly's your man. I know. <laughs> and, well, so we'll, we'll let Mrs. Sullivan count. Okay. Well, since <laughs> we had 100 community members, what was five? Right? Okay. And then five. two education people. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. So we don't. 17. So I'm still unclear. Do I extend invitations tomorrow for people to appoint, or are we holding off on this committee until after a profile? Could you extend the invitation at leaving a caveat that if we define a profile that we would have the ability to add? Yeah. We can do that. Up yeah. to the number of people. We can add something up. Right, yeah, yeah. but we could yeah. say maybe up to 22. Yes, they weren't. Okay, I took a stab at a timeline. Uh, these dates are all subject to change, but just, just so we all have an understanding of how long it takes to do this um, and the fact that we don't have uh, uh, a lot of. Uh, you know, time. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because as I've mentioned before, in the higher education world, the search season, it corresponds with the academic calendar. And so therefore, you will see searches starting just prior to the holidays or right after the holidays, with hiring generally being finished by April. Uh, no later than May, but really April, so that if a person has to relocate, they get time to do so and be on board by July 1. Or their contract may require 90 days or something. Right, exactly. And also, if we get past that window, people will have already signed a contract for the next year, uh, which would put us in the situation of having a long-term interim uh, uh, instead of a uh, uh, so, at any rate, so obviously I'm starting with today, um, and then I was suggesting that by October 7th, the appointing bodies get us their search committee members. Um, 
And we haven't got to the search consultants, but you're going to get all of that material shortly. Um, and that we hold a special board meeting on October the 15th to select one of these firms and also to uh, appoint, officially appoint the search committee, again, subject to the ability to add to it at a later date. That, uh, that would give the search consultants a little more than two weeks to know that they've been hired. <laughs> and, um, and then we would ask for the input from all employees, have the search consultant come mid-November to conduct the forums. And, and then, uh, yes? Our board 15? Uh-huh. We're going to be in the Oh, well, yeah, that date won't work. work. Like I said, these are... The 15th or oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, the 15th or Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. Be, you yeah. won't be here. Well, we, we can adjust that. Yeah. yeah. That's what he was just... Yeah. So, again, these dates are a sample. Okay. I mean, <laughs> they we go in February? Yeah. Yeah, these things. Yeah, I just didn't know what And you're right. We have a board meeting on the 15th. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
and I have been working day and night on this. Yeah. <laughs> calling my key staff over here in HR to really know how to do these things. And they are already pulling information together from a number of different uh, systems to gather information about uh, compensation and other factors. Um, and plus we have been putting together information, some of which uh, is up here already, about both consultants that you might uh, pick as well as uh, some information on prior um, searches that have been conducted and information that's related to those. So you, you'll have a fair amount of information to look at already. Right, and, and uh, thank you, Mr. Hibbs, because I, I failed to mention that I did also ask him to uh, do a total compensation study uh, so that, uh, you know, we know not only what uh, uh, base salaries, but what additional perks and so on uh, chancellors are being offered in somewhat, no one's comparable to Maricopa, but somewhat comparable districts. Mrs. McGrath. In the past, when we've had these comparisons of salary, they've always thrown in four-year universities. I'm hoping yep. that in this instance we will keep it to two years. I, I would agree with that. So the, the expectations, everything, are very different from between the universities and the community colleges. Um, so comments or questions? I mean, this obviously has to be massaged when the search consultant gets. Okay, let's charge on. So um, the Um, so the district um, established a procurement list for executive search services um, that went into effect July 1 of 17 and remains in effect until uh, June 30th of 2021. Uh, so in the uh, notebooks uh, that have just been passed out, you will find the list of the four firms that are on uh, the procurement list and the materials that they submitted at the time about what process they would use, who some of their clients are, what their fees are. Uh, uh, I think it was just over the weekend <laughs> um, that at Mrs. Wynn's suggestion, I asked Mr. Hitz to reach out to those four firms and get updated information from them um, on who their current clients are and those kinds of things. And amazingly, he got that done. <laughs> then, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, uh, I'm, it's amazing. Uh, then, in addition, uh, uh, there's been uh, some comments that maybe four firms isn't enough to uh, uh, select from. Uh, recognizing that it's not practical to put out a new RFP and still say anywhere close to our timeline. Uh, because Mr. Hibbs advises me it takes 60 to 75 days uh, to do that. He did look at other alternatives for us and identified that uh, the, yeah, the Arizona Board of Regents does have a procurement list for executive ser services that we can uh, piggyback off. So what's wrapped around the updated uh, proposals uh, is that list, the ABOR list, with the four that are on the district procurement list included. Uh, I mean, personally, if we want to pull off of that list, you know, I'd recommend that we not do them all, but, you know, maybe two, three additional ones. Uh, Mr. Sarr had specifically asked for Greenwood Asher, and again, Mr. Hibbs 
amazingly has produced their um, paperwork as lost them. Uh, so their we're all uh, uh, so their paperwork is included in the the addendum that 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 you've got. The reason I, I, I looked at I looked at all of them and they're on their websites and check things out, but this one has worked well in the community college area. Uh -huh. Okay. If they put in Joel uh, at Dallas and a few others that we're familiar with, so so I think that. Yes. I, I was going to say, I think if, if if any of the rest of you desire more than the five choices now that are in front of you, uh, review this list and, uh, you know, and, and let me know. Although I'm of the opinion that the four that are on the procurement list plus the one that Mr. Saar has added are all well-known, very experienced um, firms. Which one did you add? I'm sorry. Greenwood. Greenwood. Asher. 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 Yes, Mrs. McGrath. We operate on funds from Maricopa County taxpayers, and I believe in buying local. I strongly agree with hiring the seasons firm because she's local and well, you are going to be given the opportunity to make the case for her when we meet on October the 15th. And if you were to stick with local, the Duffy Group has had experience with so just They're local. Would you like them at it? Sure. That's a place that I've done that. Duffy Education. Duffy. Yeah, she has. Duffy. Duffy. Okay, so again, we don't want we don't want this list to get out of control. But, although we remember, yeah, we need to do a national search. <laughs> I, I get that. I was just responding. Yeah. To the local okay, so so your homework. We broke all of them. <laughs> so your homework is to read all of those materials and come prepared on October the 15th to reach consensus as to what you firm you want to. Um, and at what point do we advertise that we're looking? Why are you doing uh, this while we're still in the meeting? They're not working. Well, they were all working a while back. Um, soon, as soon as the profile is finalized, then we can access. I guess critical. Yeah. I mean, it's out there already, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, depending on the firm. Uh, depending on the firm that we hire, I mean, some will put on their own website coming, sure. yeah, so that people who are looking know that uh, this opportunity is uh, going to be open shortly. And you're going to be asked yeah. a lot of questions in San right. Francisco. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's, that's what, what do we um, reply in unison with? About what? We're developing a job. What we're doing. Yeah, we're going to be asked. Yeah. Well, as of by the time we get to San Francisco, we will have chosen a search consultant. That's when we refer to the search consultant. Correct. Yeah. Um, so that's all that I had. Are there other things we need to. Yes, this is. Okay, so the the bound is the original materials that they submitted to get on the procurement list. And it was submitted back in 2016. So the addendum is updated information plus green reaction. Mm -hmm. 
are the fees that they charge included in this? Uh, yes. And most of them, because they were submitted in 2016, provide for uh, some kind of escalation over the years. It may be, since I haven't had an opportunity to look at that yet, since, since I just asked for it two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your work. Sounds like Mr. Hitson have hardly anything. <laughs> I had my feet up until yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to call people to get it. He's not going to open the email from me that comes in. Over the <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, okay, so we're good? Yeah, thank you. So Very I good. will proceed to extend the invitations to the groups um, tomorrow then. So in terms of what. Uh, business have to come up with for a job description. Do we know where that's going to fit into the schedule? Uh, well, I, I mean, he's got a draft already. I, I suspect we may be able to put it in on the October, uh, the October 15th discussion. So I'll, I'll add that and can text it to you. Anything else? Not thank you all very much. This adjourns the work uh, session. We will immediately convene executive session in the legal conference room. Immediately. Immediately. Immediately.